In this walkthrough, we're going to look at how to set up a custom action in Adalo. Custom actions let you interface with APIs, or application programming interfaces, that are outside of Adalo's ecosystem. And what this allows you to do is do things like send emails, send text messages, uh, convert links, generate IDs, crop photos, generate video links, all sorts of amazing things that you can do with this. And in this example, we're going to actually use a URL shortening API to shorten a long link into a very small one. So to get started, what I'm going to do is uh, explain kind of what I've got set up here initially. Uh, over here in my database, in my users collection, I've just added a text property here called personal link. And let's just say that maybe this is a link that the user wants to display on their profile, except we're going to kind of standardize and shorten that link. Uh, you can think of this like a short link on your Twitter profile. Over here, I've got a text input here that's just a standard text input by itself. And I've got a separate button, um, a standalone button here. And I just have a piece of text here that it has the magic text of that personal link property that I mentioned uh, that's in the user's collection. So what I'm going to do to create this custom action is I'm just going to click on this button here, which is the button that I want to add the action to. And I'm going to scroll down here to my Add Action button. And I'm going to click on Custom Action and then New Custom Action. And this is going to create a pop-up where then I can give my custom action a name, which in this case I'm just going to call it Shorten URL. And I need to always give it a type as well. Um, and in this case, even though shortening something isn't really creating something, this is just a label uh, that I'm going to use uh, for my action within Adalo. So for this one, I'm just going to choose Create, and then click Next. Now, this can look confusing initially, uh, but um, the API that we're going to look at is one called Micro. And Micro offers a lot of different uh, APIs here uh, for you to get started with. And the good thing about this is that they all uh, function the exact same way. So it's very easy to accomplish different things using the same kind of structure and format. Um, in this case, we're wanting to use the URL portion of the micro API. Um, and before we get into this, it's usually good to just look over these and, and kind of see their uh, description and what all you can do with it. But before we get into looking at the actual URL um, part of the API, we actually need to generate an API key. And you can think of API keys like passwords. Um, and to get one of these, um, I'm assuming you've already kind of created your micro account at m3o.com. Uh, but once you have, you can go up here to, to the your email address in the top right and then click on API keys. And this will give us some, in, some instructions here on how to use the API, specifically how to authenticate to it. Um, again, your API key is like a password, so we have to have some way to send that password to the API in some way. Um, and you can see I already have uh, an API here. Um, I'm just going to delete this one very quickly so that we can add a new one. Um, and I'm going to actually create a new API key. And you can create multiple ones of these, and this is really useful for if you want to uh, use the same API in multiple, ma multiple apps. Maybe you're making apps for clients or something, um, and you want to charge them individually. It's good to have separate API keys for those. But for this new API key, I'm just going to, again, call this just a Dalo demo here. And the scopes, you can think of these as permissions for this key. So this is asking me, OK, what solutions, what services do you want to use or do you want to give this API key access to? Um, and you can certainly go down through here and just click all of them, but I'm just going to choose the URL for right now. right? I'll click out of that little drop down, and then I'm going to click Create here. And this is the only time you'll see it here in this yellow box. It's saying this is the only time you will see your API key. So as soon as I close this window, I will not be able to see this again. So what I want to do is make sure that I copy this. And I'm just going to paste this into a notepad document for the time being. But you'll certainly want to save this uh, somewhere secure so that you don't lose it. Um, just know that if you 
do lose it, you'll have to come back in here and regenerate a, a new key. All right, so now that I've copied that, I'll hit close here, and we will come back to the API key in just a second. But what I want to pick up on is this uh, URL right here. We are actually going to copy this, and this is actually our base URL that we're going to use in our custom action. Um, and all APIs have one of these. Um, some of them look a little bit different than others. Um, some of them you kind of have to hunt for. Not all of them are this, this apparent. Uh, but in this case, for this micro API, we're just going to copy this. And this base API actually goes in this first field right here. So I'm just going to paste this in. Oops. Let me paste this. There we go. And you'll notice that it's telling me the service and the endpoint. Uh, I need to actually replace this with the service that I'm using, which in this case is just URL. And if I go back to the micro API and click on Explore APIs here, you will see that when I click on the URL option, uh, this is the service that we're using, and the endpoint that we are using is can be any of these. So list, proxy, and this shortened one down here is the one that I want to use. So I'm going to go back to my custom action and replace the endpoint with shorten. And again, all APIs are different, um, but definitely check out our API um, primer that we have that's in the glossary. Uh, for more information about how to use different APIs. For this API, we're just going to use a POST method, uh, but again, there's more information about that in our glossary about different methods. And then this API requires an authentication header, um, which is how we're going to send our API key to it. Um, and we can see this in our, if we go back to our API keys here, we can see right here that it's requiring a header, which is what this H denotes, and the name of it needs to be authorization, and the value of it needs to be bearer and then our key. Okay, so that's what we're going to put here in our custom action. So I'm just going to add a header here. We're going to call this authorization, and I'm going to type in the word bearer, and I've got my notepad here, so I'm going to highlight my API key. We will kind of copy this. I'll go back to my custom action, and I will actually just paste this right in here. And it's important that I put a space in between bearer and my key. So put a space in there, and you'll see that it jumps down to the next line, which is good. And then I'll click Done. Now the next thing that I need to do is, just like any other action that you would use in a Dalo that has inputs in it, uh, we are creating a custom action, so we also need to have inputs for our custom action. So I can add inputs for it over here. Um, and the one thing that I need to send is, of course, a URL that needs shortening. So what I'm going to do is click on Add Item, and then since a URL is a combination of numbers, letters, and symbols, I'm actually going to click this text option here. And the name here, I'm just going to call this URL to be shortened. And it's really good to name these properly because uh, it can get kind of confusing if they are not detailed enough later on when you get ready to use the custom action elsewhere. And the example value here, this just needs to be a valid uh, URL or link. So I'm just going to use Google for now. Uh, HTTPS google.com. There we go. All right, so we have our input now. And now the last thing that I need is some information, again, from the micro API telling me uh, what parameters I need to send in the body of the request. Um, and the only one that's actually required, let me go back to our URL uh, documentation here, and then go down to our shortened endpoint. You can see that the one of the required uh, parameters here is called destination URL. But if you want to just pick up a quick example of how to use this, we can click this little drop down here. And here's the actual request body that we need. So all we have to do is just copy this. We'll hit copy, go back to our custom action, and then paste that right in there. All right. 
Now, this is great, but if we just leave this as is, the only, the only link that it's ever going to create a short link for is this one right here, uh, because this is static, this doesn't change. So what we're gonna do is we're going to remove this, and inside these parentheses, we're going to place this new input that we just made. So whatever value we place here in the future is going to be plugged in right here. So I'm just gonna use my magic text and go to URL to be shortened. And you can see that now it's sending the destination URL as whatever this value is. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and click run test request. And here is a generated short link from the micro API for HTTPS google.com. Um, and some other things that I can do here if the test is successful is click on this short URL and I can even change the name of this so that it's a little bit more appropriate like uh, shortened URL um, or if I don't need this result here I can just throw it in the trash so that I don't see it in the future um, it actually in the editor. Uh, the other thing is if you don't get a test successful here um, I recommend you go back and look at your API request, make sure everything is spelled correctly, um, look at all the headers and the, the JSON body there. And then you can also look at the show full response, and this will show you the exact response from the server. And sometimes this can, this can contain information about error codes and different things like that that can help you troubleshoot your custom action. So once all of this looks good to me, I'm gonna go ahead and click Save Custom Action. And just like we in, put the input into the custom action. You can see right here that it says URL to be shortened. Here's my input. Um, and I actually need to put in some magic text here to reference whatever the person types in here. I want them to paste the link, the long link here, and I want the custom action to look at what's in this field and then shorten that link. So I'm just gonna go to my magic text again, and I will go to form inputs and then input. And I'm still not quite done. The last thing that I want to do is after it has created the short link, I actually want to save that short link to the user's record. And this is the powerful part about custom actions is that I can actually use those results in subsequent actions. So I'm gonna add another action here called update logged in user. And we're gonna update that personal link field that we have here. And to do this, all I have to do is go to my magic text now I have an option here for shorten URL, which is the custom action that is just above this action here. And I'm gonna choose shortened URL, which is that result that we uh, just changed. All right, so now we've got a button that will shorten a link and store that shortened link in our user's profile. Let's give it a shot. All right, so I've got my field here. Uh, I'm just gonna put in another, adalo.com is already pretty short, but we'll just use it, as, use it as an example. And then when I click shorten, you can see that on the back end, it reaches out to the API, sends this URL, and then updates my user record with the shortened link here. So that's just a quick example of how you can set up a custom action in your app. Again, custom actions can be used for many, many different things, and each API is structured and organized and functions a little bit differently. So I hope that was helpful for you and gets you started on the road to creating very awesome, powerful custom actions for your app.